Throughout the evolutionary history of mankind, there emerges from time to time striking personalities who, through their thoughts and way of being, open up new perspectives on life. Martinus, the Danish writer and mystic, was one of them. Perhaps you have asked yourself many times, who am I? Who am I really? Where am I going? We humans seek answers. We have found many answers in natural science. Yet science falls short when it comes to explaining the depths of the mind. Despondency, sorrow, intuition, love and longing. Many, however, are able to find meaning in art and philosophy, in religion and belief. In 1921, when Martinus was 30, he had a series of profound illuminative spiritual experiences. He himself was surprised when, from one moment to the next, he was able to understand the meaning of life. Every time he asked an existential question, he himself could answer it through his intuition. He experienced that the universe was pervaded by infinite love and wisdom. From then on until his death 60 years later, he saw it as his task to express this intuitive knowledge in the form of symbols and logical analyses. He created 100 symbols and wrote more than 6,000 pages that describe a coherent world picture and the eternal spiritual laws. What was it then that Martinus gained insight into, and what can we use it for? Og det drejer sig jo om at se, hvad det er, der fjerner menneskene fra alle de meget mørke tilstande, de befinder sig i. Hvorfor fører menneskene krig, for eksempel? Hvorfor der er de koncentrationsleje og pinder mennesker til døde? Hvorfor laver de kernevåg? Hvorfor er de intolerante? Hvorfor bare taler de hinanden? Det gælder om at finde årsagen til det. Og disse mørke tilstande, de har kun én eneste årsag, og det er mangel på kærlighed. Kærlighed er det eneste, der kan få menneskene bort fra de mørke tilstande. Derfor er det det eneste fornødende at komme til bunds i, hvad kærligheden er. The world is full of war, violence and intolerance, and most people look after their own interests. Is this logical and meaningful? Fundamentally, yes, answers Martinus, whose analyses present an optimistic world picture in which the necessity of the darkness and suffering in the world is explained. He describes how we are all cosmic beings on an infinite journey, the purpose of which is quite simply to experience and to create. But in order for us to experience and create, there must be contrasts. Without contrasts, there would be no experience and no creation, no life. But life is we are taking part in an eternal cosmic education in which we are all teachers and pupils at the same time. The teaching consists of experiences of pleasantness, light and joy which attract us, and unpleasantness, darkness and suffering which repel us. Man can danne in own tanke sværere, and when man holds all the mørke ude, and that does man. Der hvor man går imod mørket med kærlighed, sympati og venlighed, så vidt det lader sig gøre, så får man ikke det mørke ind i sin bevidsthed. Til sidst så kan det slet ikke komme ind. Man bliver så vældig trænet op til, at det slet ikke kan trænge ind i en. 
Man kan slet ikke blive fornærmet. Man kan slet ikke blive bitter eller hadefuld. Men derimod kan man se på disse, man nærmest få madøl, nærmest føle med lidenhed med mennesker, der udløser sig på denne måde. Det er jo dette, at vi må komme frem til at få den åndelige side ind i verden. Through our experiences, particularly the painful ones, our ethical and intellectual abilities grow. Our, all of us, without exception, through rebirth and many lives, will become moral geniuses, radiant beings that emanate only humaneness and neighborly love. We will then realize who we really are. That on the one hand we are participants in a vast drama, full of contrasts, in order to experience and create. And on the other hand, behind all the experiences, we are unchangeable, eternal beings. We realize that darkness and suffering are simply camouflaged love, and that death does not exist. Everything is life, and we are at one with everything. We can say that the I experiences itself in the created. Martinus, therefore, begins his main work, Leavitt's Ball, the Book of Life, as follows. Every living being that comes into the world, regardless of whether it belongs to the community of beings we call terrestrial mankind, or whether it belongs to those forms of life that manifest themselves through what we are accustomed to recognizing as animals, plants and minerals, is without exception subject to the experience of life. Et hvert levende væsen, der kommer til verden, ligegyldigt hvad enten det hører ind under det væsen samfund, vi kalder det. Det er de erdenmenschheit nennen, eller den leben. Det er det, der bliver sont tous sans exception sujet à l'expérience de la vie. Despite his extraordinary insight, Martinus emphasizes that he is not in any way better than those who have gone before or will come after him. He does not favor or discriminate against people, schools of thought or religions. He does not call his work a religion or a faith, but a spiritual science or cosmology. Martinus does not therefore encourage people to blindly accept what he says, but rather verify his analyses in their daily lives and see if they are true. The purpose of his analyses are, he says, to show a path to theoretical cosmic insight, and the most important thing is how we live our lives and how we react to the world around us. He himself said quite simply that his greatest desire was to use his knowledge to get people to love one another. <laughs> 